Hello and welcome to lesson number 8.1. We will talk about roster data today. The exercise data consists of four different um, satellite images. We will add them to our current uh, new project. They are placed in the roster folder in your exercise data. We'll just apply them and there they are. Four different rosters. There's a big one and two medium-sized ones and a small one in the upper right corner of the area of interest here around Svelendam. Now, as we do not want to deal with these four layers all by themselves, so one by one, we will first create a so-called virtual, virtual raster data set, a so-called catalog. Therefore, go to raster, say miscellaneous and say we would like to build a virtual raster that is somehow um, a folder for all the four layers. So we will say we have some input layers, we will select all. Press on OK. Unfortunately the dialog disappears always. The resolution, we will go with the average resolution. Sometimes you would like to build a catalog out of different um, different satellite images with different resolutions therefore it is asking you would you like to place save it as an average highest lows whatsoever we will go with the average uh, we don't place each input file into a separate band uh, we will place it one by one so that's um, next to each other we'll not make the z level of the of the so the band different we will stick with the advanced parameters so far due to the fact that we will not have any real conversion in the resolution we don't need to really care about the resampling method here so uh, and we would like to save it to a temporary file you can see that the dialog also shows you some console call that means that you can take this string to the console of your choice, so in Windows, in Mac, in Linux, whatsoever. And he, in the in the background, he's just running this um, this uh, command here. So you can copy it and uh, simply use it in some sort of scripting language or whatsoever. So we will just run this. Maybe I will save it to a file here and not only make it uh, locally or temporarily replace the old one once again dialog disappeared Set, say run this was fast so let's have a look what has happened i have now a new layer here i can remove all the old, all the old ones and the vrt file or the vrt layer here serves as yeah, somehow as a folder as a group and as a catalog for all the other four layers let's have a look on what information is in this file right so let's have a look here this is the vrt file it's quite small with just 9k um, so it doesn't have any real in image information in it but let's uh, let's have a look here in a text editor so this is the vrt file so we have some information about the raster size, some information about the uh, used coordinate reference system or yeah, SRS. We have then four bands, band one, two, three, and four. You can simply choose to see or count by searching for a simple source. We will have 16 hits here. So, uh, and each, each image is then placed with an offset because four images needs to be aligned. Uh, but the main or main advantage of this uh, catalog is now, if we are going to somehow change the projection system, we can do this with a catalog file. So go on, conversion. Let's use warp reproject with projections. And now we are using the VRT file and we will project this source CRS is our current project CRS and we will tar use target CRS of 34 South. 
The resampling method just now is taking one pixel and due to the conversion and the and in the warping of that pixel, the target pixel needs to be a rectangle or a square uh, in the end as well. But due to the conversion of that input square, the output form might be a rectangle or some sort of parallelogram or whatsoever. So it, in order to uh, in order to save it in a square form again, he needs to have some sort of resampling method as, uh, um, assigned to. Nearest neighbor looks a little bit shabby afterwards. So I will always say, well, if you're not really interested in the in the source source color code or in the source value, um, then you should definitely go with bilinear or cubic or cubic spline just to make it not so edgy in the end. Sometimes if you're interested in the in data, you should stick with the nearest neighbor because this will not alter the values, but the the number of the value, but it definitely changes the form or if you have some lines in your in your data, they might not look like lines after all, right? So, but we will go with bilinear because we are just interested in the visual impact for the moment. We don't care about the no data value and we will save it to a temporary file again say run and there it is this is the output so of course it still looks quite similar let's zoom in a little bit to see the differences here so this is now the output this was the input it looks smoother right so but this is due to the bilinear interpolation method that you, you cannot see those edges here so good anymore because it's blurred out a little bit right so this is the difference then and we can save this export as um, save as a geotiff QGIS training uh, exercise data own data where is it own data VRT export 34S. You will not play around with the other uh, items here. You can change the resolution or add some options here as well as some parameters. We will simply save it. And this is now the whole data set. Let's have a look on the file size of this non VRT data set. You can see the difference here. It's 80 megabytes. Uh, compared to the nine kilobytes of the w uh, vrt file here so this is now vrts and the warping of a file so the reprojection of raster image um, but then there's another option so we have created a catalog file here first in first place let's move this up here we can also say okay instead of making a catalog file maybe merge the data sets right sometimes uh, images tend to be up on each other like if you have Landsat images which is a satellite system um, there you have single bands and those single bands correspond to single wavelength or singular wavelength so you can come, can create a merged raster file with each band holding some level of information but once again take this into action uh, we will go with miscellaneous merge we will select input layers, those four. Go back to the dialog. We will grab the pseudo color and we will not place each input file into a separate band because this will then correspond to, let's say, 16 bands. And that makes it a little bit harder to get a good visualization. We will not take care of the input pixels and We'll just run it. Now this looks totally different, right? But why does it? First of all, it's always a question about the about the styling, right? So sometimes you can visualize it like this. Two, three, and four. Let's have a look. Say apply. So you can. There are different ways of visualizing um, 
the data set and uh, we will try the last processing using the history go there and say do not grab the pseudo color let's have a look whether this turns out as it is now just press on run again it's not throwing any errors here but once again the color scheme looks a little bit different and you re need to reassign the uh, green and yellow colors to the original image and this is now yeah somehow you create one new data set and he's trying to get all the contrast values to fit to each other so let's have a look whether we can we can create a new um or a better minimum maximum stretch uh, looks better but due to the fact that you're combining the image information out of four different images to different times in place like vegetation coverage might be different for those times um, the day of uh, or the time of the day might be different so there are of course changes in the colorization of the images right you can also see that the original first image here is a bit different so this was a merge already from two different images you can see it clearly here so what we have learned today first of all you can merge raster files you can build virtual catalogs out of it virtual rasters and you can reproject those raster files using the build-in functionality here on the raster projections warp extraction uh, miscellaneous merge and miscellaneous build virtual raster thank you very much for watching if there are any questions just drop a comment subscribe to the channel if you want to, wouldn't like to miss any new video in my qgis course and thanks again take care and goodbye